Hi there, I'm Tom Field. I'm Senior Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's webinar. The topic is Understanding Third-Party App Risk to Google Workspace Data. Your presenter is Nick Harahill. He's Director of Support with Spin AI. And to give you some background on this session today, SaaS applications are typical in the modern hybrid workforce, but their adoption requires organizations to carry out a proper risk assessment of each third-party SaaS application accessing the data in these environments. Spin AI released new findings analyzing risk from third-party SaaS applications and browser extensions with access to Enterprise's Google Workspace environment. So in this session, you'll learn the modern SaaS environment and challenges, some findings and insights from the SaaS app risk report, and methods to evaluate and control SaaS application risk. First, a little bit of information about my organization, Information Security Media Group. We are a global education and intelligence firm. Our headquarters is in the U.S. in Princeton, New Jersey. You may know us, of course, by any of our 35 media properties. These include bank info security, healthcare info security, and data breach today. In all, we reach an audience of over 1 million security leaders globally, and we give them a daily diet of news, analysis, research, events, and educational programs exactly like this one. A few notes of housekeeping. If you have any questions for Nick, you can submit them anytime by the chat window on your screen. Now, I likely can't get to every question, but those questions that we don't answer in the course of this session, we'll get responses back to you via email. Should you encounter any technical issues while viewing today's webinar, please take down the email address that you see on your screen. If you write to webinars at ismg.io, we've got support staff standing by to help. Also, a reminder, today's webinar is copyrighted material. It's meant for today's session and individual study purposes only. If you would like to use any of the information presented today, or if you're looking for customized training materials, please contact us. I'm thrilled to introduce our sponsor, Spin AI. Spin AI is a SaaS security company protecting enterprises against the risk of shadow IT, data leak and loss, ransomware, and non-compliance. Spin One, the all-in-one SaaS security platform for mission-critical SaaS apps, protects SaaS data for Google Workspace, Microsoft 365, Salesforce, and Slack. Spin One provides SaaS security posture management, SaaS DLP, and SaaS ransomware protection for more than 1,600 organizations worldwide to reduce downtime and recovery costs and save time for SecOps teams. To learn more, please visit Spin. AI. And of course, I'm delighted to introduce our speaker, Nick Harahill. He's an experienced cybersecurity and business leader, director of support at Spin AI. His industry experience includes leading security teams at enterprise companies such as PayPal and eBay, as well as building programs, processes, and operations at cybersecurity startups. You see several of them there. With that, I want to bring on to our virtual stage here, Nick Harahill. Nick, thanks so much for being here to go through this session with me today. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I'm excited to be here to uh, talk about our report and our findings. Now, Nick, I know that you're out with a new application risk report. We talked about that in the introduction. What are some of the key findings you want to share with us today? Yeah, so really three key findings I wanted to talk about. And number one is the fact that our assessment found that over 75% of SaaS applications pose a higher medium risk in Google Workspace and Microsoft 365. And just to expand on that point a bit, the applications that I'm talking about are those applications that have OAuth access into environments. So employees are empowered now to bring in these applications from various marketplaces and connect those to their SaaS environments. And when I'm talking about risk factors associated with these, we're looking at a variety of different things to come away with a comprehensive assessment. So for instance, we're looking at uh, the levels of permissions, uh, we're looking at compliance and business factors and traditional security factors that you would utilize in assessing an application, whether that be vulnerabilities or uh, you know how often an application is updated. So taking that a step farther uh, and specifically looking at permissions, Another key takeaway was that apps uh, typically that are higher risk are going to have a much 
higher degree of permissions entailed. So when an employee is installing the application, it's typically going to give you that laundry list of uh, different permissions that are required for this uh, particular application to work. And just looking at Gmail and Google Drive, we found that 43% have the ability to read, compose, send, and permanently delete email from Gmail, as well as 46% on Google Drive that have the ability to edit, create, and delete uh, Google Drive files. And while these types of applications obviously provide us a lot of convenience and collaboration uh, type of functionality, they do entail a lot of risk uh, with those permissions entailed. And you see a lot of these with Gmail. Actually, a lot of the most popular Google Workspace Gmail applications um, are things that allow you to do personalization, routing, uh, all different types of things to make your Gmail experience better. But at the same time, with that uh, convenience and uh, abilities they provide, they also uh, produce a lot of risk. And then lastly, a key takeaway is that apps can change. Just like any application that you utilize, these applications within your SaaS environment have the ability to go up and down when it comes to uh, risk, because just like any application, over time, they can get more hardened as they develop application and remediate vulnerabilities. But of course, like we saw with a very popular uh, application in LastPass, you know, they can have in, uh, vulnerabilities and even a breach introduced that can uh, change that risk score for that particular application. Oh, that's excellent, Nick. And we'll give our audience a chance to see the entire report. They can download that and go through it at their pace, but you gave us an excellent overview. Let me ask you this. Talk about today's SaaS apps risk landscape. How would you say that it's evolved? Yeah, so it's evolved in a number of different ways. So first, I would note that it's evolved in terms of sprawl and ability to manage. So I like to think back uh, to about 15 years ago when I started in cybersecurity. And an initial role that I held was in third-party risk management. Um, so very traditional approach to how we manage both applications that were having access to our environment and data, as well as other third-party relationships, as, you know, if you were a business unit, you had to come through my team to go through all of those checks and balances so that we could assess this application or third-party relationship. So once companies have moved to the cloud, it's provided employees that ability to um, plug in these applications to their environment and access corporate data as well as customer data uh, that many times is outside of the purview of their security administration or other technical administrators. So in that sense, it's provided a lot of shadow IT risk. Along with that, you know, these applications have varying degrees of access to company data, which presents risks to business, privacy, compliance, and security processes. So, you know, first off with the sprawl, as well as that ability to manage that sprawl. Uh, the second point with how it's evolved in today's risk landscape is it's evolved in terms of the amount of applications and extensions that are available in the SaaS environment. So if you go out to uh, any marketplace, whether it be on Google uh, or Microsoft, there's thousands of apps and extensions that are available for uh, employees to install and more introduced every day. And then the last thing I would note is it is becoming an attack vector. So as an industry, this is something that requires a lot better focus that we're not seeing as much today. So given that evolution, Nick, what would you say the trends are that you're paying attention to most across different sectors? Yeah, so number one is the fact that there's an increased use of these apps across businesses uh, that are critical to processing. So. You know, in 2020, uh, with the pandemic, when um, everybody was working from home, this increased the need for collaboration apps, some of which present risks to your environment. Uh, but that need for efficiency many times outweighs the risk, or the risk isn't necessarily fully measured in the SaaS environment. Uh, so besides the privacy, security, and compliance risk to data, it also introduces things like availability risk as these 
apps become more contingent upon uh, business processing. Uh, the second trend that I would note is just the lack of visibility that organizations have into these apps that have access into their SaaS environment. So most orgs are not proactively managing these or even have access into those insights uh, to understand those risks entailed. So going back to that point around shadow IT. And then the last thing I would note uh, that we're seeing as a trend is that where companies are trying to manage this themselves, the times and time and resources required to manage it is quite arduous. So um, we're looking at typically an average of about 30 apps per employee uh, that they've installed. And when you think of a large enterprise company with thousands of employees and all of these different apps that need to be assessed and proactively managed, it's quite daunting for a security administrator. So uh, as a company to effectively manage the risk around this, you need to have agile processes that can keep up with the sprawl of these applications. Nick, we've given our audience a lot to think about in a short period of time. If you were to boil it down, what would you say are some of the very real risks to organizations today? Yeah, so one of the things that I mentioned earlier uh, on the security side is that this is a growing attack vector. And one of the things that we're seeing in the industry is that on the security side, we're seeing various forms of OAuth abuse. So with OAuth abuse, that allows malicious apps to impersonate legitimate ones, uh, which could allow for data theft or manipulation. Uh, so in this case, a malicious app impersonates a legitimate application, gains that trust, and is essentially obtaining those OAuth tokens from users. And by impersonating that trusted application and pulling those OAuth tokens, uh, an attacker can do various things with that. Um, a release, a recent Microsoft uh, study that I read was talking about uh, what's co called consent phishing emails. Uh, I think it's also called illicit consent grants where OAuth request links um, are put out there to tr trick recipients into granting attacker owned apps permissions and into sensitive data, and they can uh, utilize that victim as a point for uh, either spam, uh, other phishing emails, things like that. On the compliance and privacy side, uh, some other things that are real risks to organizations, uh, data privacy. So OAuth apps can access user data with the, with the user's permission. Therefore, it's essential that the user understands um, that the app is only accessing the data that it needs to perform its intended function, which uh, is not something that's always top of mind for an end user uh, when they're plugging in and installing these apps. And then lastly, on the compliance side, you know, another real practical risk to organizations uh, is if you're plugging in different applications that have access uh, to customer or company data, you need to be keeping things like, G, for instance, GDPR top of mind. You know, is this an application that is compliant with that and fits within your risk posture? So I would say just to sum things up on the real risk to organization, uh, it's the same types of risks that traditional applications have posed for us that as an industry, we're used to assessing and measuring those risks. The big difference that I see with OAuth apps is just the fact that they're not giving the same attention as our traditional approach to assessing applications. Let me tap into your expertise. Given what you've shared with us, how do you recommend that one go about assessing the relative risk of their SaaS apps? Yeah, so the very first thing I would consider is within my SaaS environment, you know, what, what is, where is the critical data stored? what access do employees have to that data. Extending beyond that, I would think of applications that they have access to that they plugged into the environment and um, you know, what, what risk do those entail? You know, what type of uh, permissions are they, uh, are they granting to your SaaS environment? What type of information are they accessing? What are those functions entailed? And then lastly, taking it a step beyond that, um, so you're thinking about uh, your employees, your information, uh, the number of apps, uh, just thinking about your overall environment. Um, so if you're thinking about 
all of the employees that you have that have the ability to plug in these apps, you know, it's very important first step just to get your arms around that and have oversight into what that looks looks like in your environment. Okay, more advice. What are some best practices you'd recommend so one can adopt and control some of these risks? Yeah, so number one, it's uh, maintaining an inventory. So a very fundamental function of everything that we do in security is having an asset inventory. You also need to consider assets, uh, those OAuth applications that uh, are a extension of what your business functions are. Uh, so having an accurate inventory of those is going to be very critical so you can have oversight into what's been plugged into your uh, SaaS environment. Taking it a step farther than that, it's great that you know, if you can get that inventory and understand what your employees are utilizing, the next thing that you need to do is understand the risk of those. Uh, and we've talked about this before that it can be a daunting task uh, to go through and assess uh, what are thousands of applications that could have access to your environment. And what's a key point there too is one of the uh, major findings from our report is, is the fact that this needs to be an ongoing assessment. Uh, it can't be point in time because like we talked about earlier, um, applications uh, become more hardened over time or could become vulnerable. Next thing, which is also fundamental to security is just making sure that we have policies and governance in place that are aligning with your risk management posture. So those policies and governance are considering, um, you know, your overall risk management posture, as well as other security privacy and regulatory obligations that you need to adhere to. And then lastly, with that, you know, if you have your inventory, you've assessed the risk, you have policies and governments in place, you need to have controls. And uh, with this, it need, they need to be automated controls because we've talked about the sprawl of these apps and the difficulty of uh, security and technical administrators to get their arms around these and, and keep up assessments uh, on a regular basis. So having controls in place so that you can put things on a block list, uh, put accepted apps on an allow list, or at least provide you some visibility in what's going on in your envi environment are best practices that uh, security teams should be utilizing. Nick, let's bring it back to Spin AI. How are you helping your customers to get a better handle on SaaS app risk? Yeah, so it goes back to those best practices. So number one, we're providing an inventory. And it, it's always interesting for me when I'm starting um, an engagement with an enterprise customer um, where we start collecting this inventory for all of the OAuth apps within their Google Workspace or, or Microsoft 365 environment. It's, it's very eye-opening and it's typically it's the first time that they've seen this list. And once they have that inventory, they can understand First off, the number of apps that are out there, as well as which business units are utilizing the apps, number of employees that have installed it, and other factors that are critical for them to kind of start to understand the uh, SaaS app landscape within their environment. Um, but taking it a step farther from that, it's, it's an assessment. So we're doing an automated assessment, which is ongoing, and it considers different factors like uh, the scope of permissions, uh, business operations risk, security risk, uh, compliance risk. And like I said before, it's critical that you're doing an ongoing assessment and that you understand these risk scores. So uh, you could have a particular application that maybe it is low in security risk, but it, it is high in compliance risk. And you need to take those factors back and apply those to your environment and your risk management and policy posture. But then lastly, you know, we want to make life easy on our partners at our and within our client base and those technical and security administrators and providing automated controls. So in this case, we're giving them the ability to, um, to block apps and extensions, uh, to put apps and extensions on the allow list, giving them that very quick assessment um, giving them updated assessments so that they can understand, understand if an application that maybe they had previously blessed and put on their allow list has changed significantly uh, in risk score, which you know we talked about is something that 
uh, you can commonly run into. Uh, so giving them that inventory, that risk assessment, as well as automated controls in place is how we're helping our customers better handle SaaS app risk. Very well said. Nick, I appreciate your time and insights. And thanks for all you've shared. And of course, we've got the opportunity to take some questions from our audience now. A reminder, probably can't get to every question today, but if you've got questions you haven't submitted, do so now. Any question we don't answer in the course of this session, we'll get responses back to you via email after the webinar. Nick, are you ready for a few questions? Yes, definitely. Here's your first one. Besides permissions, what are some of the main risk factors you see within applications? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, so we're looking at a variety of different factors, which I noted earlier, um, and just a few interesting ones that I will pull out that uh, um, are very contingent upon whether an application is going to run into uh, security or other types of privacy and compliance risks is, you know, number one, how often is the app updated? Um, you know, an application that's regularly updated is going to be much less susceptible uh, to vulnerabilities or uh, other technical debt that can lead to issues. Uh, so they're keeping up with both their end user base uh, on, on feature requests and things like that, but we're also finding that they're much more hardened. Another security factor is, is domain history. Uh, so that's uh, important from a security standpoint to uh, understand uh, the history of the domain. But then uh, just one that people don't always think about when they're installing an application is we find a lot of these applications that are maintained by a single developer. Um, so uh, they find their way to the marketplace and why it's a concern if an application is maintained by a single developer is that can be a, you know, as good of a developer that that person may be, they could be a single point of failure and it's very hard to keep an application uh, regularly updated and free of security issues if you're one developer. And typically with those, those apps are not often updated and become more susceptible to risks. Interesting question here. Do poor marketplace reviews align with what could be risky applications? Yeah, that's a great question. And yes, they do. And uh, a lot of it goes back to, to what I was just talking about. Uh, these could be applications that are maybe poorly developed or uh, they're maintained by one developer. And in that case, um, it's not just, you know, these marketplace reviews are typically based on the functions of the application and not necessarily risk factors. But a poorly developed application is going to be susceptible to the risks uh, that we care about, but at the same time, it's poorly developed, uh, the features and other things it's supposed to deliver on as a business function are typically um, going to not provide the best user um, experience. Uh, and then lastly, if they're developed in a way that is not, um, it's developed poorly, they're also going to provide privacy uh, risks and that it's not necessarily developed with, you know, privacy by design and not necessarily conscious of other compliance risk factors. We do find a lot of these apps that are asking for extensive permissions that are poorly developed and uh, align with those poor marketplace reviews. One more question. What types of apps are typically lower risk? Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's, we, we've talked a lot about uh, risky applications and uh, there are a lot of applications out there that, um, you know, do present lower risk. And the first thing I would note would be an application that doesn't entail a lot of permissions. So the less permissions, the less, uh, you know, ability for it to create uh, an issue or um, provide any sort of uh, security or privacy risk uh, if they're not either accessing data or critical functions. Um, another type of app that would provide lower risk is an app that's maintained and updated frequently, um, you know, especially by those by reputable companies. It's not to say that, um, you know, these applications may not become susceptible to being uh, breached or vulnerable, but uh, the more often that they're updated, um, the less of risk that they're going to be uh, in attack vector. And then I would also note that uh, companies that have a clear 
privacy policy. So these apps that are developed with a clear privacy policy in mind that is aligning those permissions with uh, the data that it's it's touching, the functions it's touching, um, is going to be the type of application that when we're assessing them, uh, at least from a privacy perspective, they're going to be lower risk because they're uh, clear and concise with uh, what it is that they need to manage. Excellent. Nick, again, I'm grateful for your insight. Thanks for answering these questions. And I want to thank our attendees as well. You took time out of your day to attend this session. We're grateful for that. We will share with you a link to the report we mentioned earlier. And I do want to say that I hope that today's discussion, I know it did, provided some data points to enable you and your organization to be even better prepared to tackle the SaaS app risks we discussed here today. As always, I look forward to seeing you again at one of our upcoming sessions. And until then, for Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you for giving us your time and your attention today.